Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Bennett Tchaikovsky, and this is my solution walkthrough for problem 13.2. And this is from Wiley uh, Tools for Business Decision Making. This is the eighth edition. The textbook authors are Paul Kimmel, Jerry Weingant, and Jill Mitchell. The question used in this presentation is copyright 2023 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. The solution presentation is copyright 2023 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are those of Bennett Tchaikovsky and not the authors of the text or of Wiley. So let's get to it. So coming right over here, we're on problem 13.2. So problem 13.2 is going to be giving us over here, we've got an income statement, we've got balance sheets, and then it's going over here, it's telling us all sales were on credit, net cash provided by operating activities was 220, or excuse me, 2025. I, Capital expenditures were 136 and cash dividends paid were 70,000. And it's asking us to go through and compute these different ratios. So the thing I want to share with you before we kind of go further on this journey, okay? So to really understand ratios, this is a really uh, challenging area. And basically what I mean by that is that to really gain, you know, in terms of teaching, I've written a class and I'm still right now in the process of going through and I, uh, you know, writing. And as you can kind of see from over here, right, this is like, you know, the vertical analysis or creating common size financial statements, I uh, liquidity ratios, activity ratios, profitability ratios, um, other considerations with leases, leverage and coverage ratios, all these different things. And this is it, there's a lot of information, right? So when you kind of go through and are looking at this, right? So let's kind of tip put this over here too. Um, I think these are almost the same. I just want to check something. I, yeah, these are also other videos I also have in terms of lists, but it's like, again, this is from another textbook, but what I'm going to tell you though, is that, yeah, it's a lot of, I, uh, there's a lot of information when it comes to understanding ratios. So I feel as though when I'm just going through here and mechanically saying, okay, this is earnings per share, there's so much more behind it. So I really want to encourage you that one of the parts of financial statement analysis is to, there's a whole step-by-step -step process. I do have a video that kind of shows me, I think I, I think I used Chegg where I essentially like went through, let's see if I can find it. Okay, hold on. So when I teach financial statement analysis, what I really like to do is to have you pick two publicly traded companies. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link to this video series. This is all public, but this is really kind of showing you uh, just with companies like how to, you know, analyze them or just a sample of an analysis. And I, I think the other thing to kind of share with you is that, you know, mechanically going through, like if you're taking my class and I give you something like this, I'm going to give you all of the ratios. So what I've kind of done is I've pre-populated this with the ratios. So it's, you know, if you're looking for more meaning, I have other videos that are out there that you can go through and refer to, but I just want to kind of share with you. It's like, Hey, look, you know, just going through and computing ratios. Anybody can do that. It's not hard. You just figure out what the numbers are and you just do it. The harder question comes in is that if I'm given this list of ratios, which one do I, what's going to be the best one to use and why? Why is one ratio more significant than another ratio? And when you kind of look at this, it's like, well, what would you choose? Would I choose to use inventory turnover or accounts receivable turnover? Well, it's kind of a toss up because as a percentage of total assets, both are around, you know, 10, 11%. So it's really, or maybe 10%. So it's really, you can't just say like, oh, use this ratio. You got to have to kind of think through 
why would I be choosing a certain ratio? So if you're looking for more context about just beyond me going through and sharing you and, you know, doing these computations for this video, please go through and watch the other videos because it's not going to really make sense unless you really have like that kind of background. So with that all being said, let's go over here and take a look at what we're being asked to go through and compute. The first one is EPS, which is also known as earnings per share. This is going to be net income. We're just being asked to do this for 2015. This is going to be net income minus my preferred dividends. My preferred dividends are zero, right? My weighted average share is outstanding. And this is another one where I don't like these books, but it's, you know, it's what we have to deal with. Now, they say over here, it's common stock at $5 par. Now, that's if you've seen any of my other videos, it's a huge no-no. But what we need to figure out is what are the weighted average shares outstanding? So if our common shares over here were 290,000 and 300,000 respectively, and they had a $5 par value, then you're looking at, they had 58,000 common shares. Um, wow, they had 58,000 shares, uh, common shares as of, uh, 2025. And then over here, they had 60,000 common shares. Boy, this looks really bizarre. Hold on. Because this looks like you have treasury stock. I, uh, uh, okay. So yeah, this is basically what we would go through and do. So the weighted average share is outstanding are basically gonna be 58,000 and 60,000. How did I get that? I took the uh, common stock at par. There's no additional paid in capital, right? This is the whole thing. I divided this by the par value of $5 per share and I got 58,000 at the end, 60,000 at the beginning. Uh, again, I don't think that this makes a lot of sense, but we're just kind of here to have some fun. My weighted average share is outstanding is gonna be 60,000 plus 58,000. And I'm gonna divide this by two, right? It's a weighted average, I'm dividing it by two. So my average, my weighted average common shares is going to be 118,000 divided by two or 59,000. So my earnings per share is gonna be 218,000 divided by 59,000 or roughly $3.69. So this is my earnings per share. When we get to the price to earnings ratio, we'll need to be going through and using this again. Return on shareholders equity over here, net income minus preferred dividends, same as the result that we had over here from before. My average shareholders equity is gonna be what? Well, my beginning shareholders equity right, my beginning shareholders equity was 603,400. This so is my ending was 6034. My beginning was 485,4. I'm taking these two over here. I'm dividing this by two. And the result that I'm going to get for my average shareholders at equity is going to be 534,400. To make this a little bit bigger for everybody to see, especially for me. Okay. Okay. So right over here, we got 218,000 divided by 534,400. And I get uh, 0.40 or 41 cents. It's my return on shareholder or excuse me, this is as a percentage. My return on shareholders equity is 40.79%. Also too, if you don't know what something means, right? So if I come over here and say, what is return on shareholders equity? And what we would do is we would come over here. Um, there's a ratio that looks like a Canadian website, uh, return on equity, right? So dividing my net income by shareholders equity, Investopedia, thank you, Investopedia. When I teach my financial statement analysis in my, if you watch the other videos, I think I'm on this website like constantly. I don't even use a textbook. 
So over here, that's return on shareholders equity. Uh, return on assets. This is going to be net income, which is going to be 218,000 divided by average total assets. My average total assets are going to be my beginning. So this over here, my beginning, or some of my, my ending is 1,026,900. One my beginning total assets was 852,8. Divide taking this result here, dividing this by two, I'm getting 939,850. And so this again, we're going to look at this in terms of being a percentage. So my return on assets is 23.2%. What does this ratio mean? You have to go through and look it up. It also is going to depend upon every, every company is different. So the rate than say the airline industry, right? Where we get our flights canceled. Thank you, Southwest and the like. So um, it didn't happen to me, but a friend of mine, his son had to drive to Palm Springs to catch a flight. And that was a good time. So over here, the current ratio um, is going to be my current assets, right? It's those assets that are going to basically be due within the coming year. Um, we're going to use them in the current year divided by my Current liabilities are 203, uh, 500, 203,500. So my current ratio is 1.85. Is that good or bad? Depends on the industry you're in. Note two, if you're looking for a better liquidity ratio, you may want to check out the quick ratio. It told us to assume that all credits, all sales were on credit. So over here, my net credit sales are going to be right over here at 1,895,40. I have to divide this by my average accounts receivable. What is my average accounts receivable going to be? It's going to be my beginning, which is actually in this case is the ending plus the beginning divided by two or 110,300. So my average AR is 110,300. When I divide these through my accounts receivable turnover, is 17.3. That's actually very, very good. It means that as I'm going through and making sales, I am collecting on them very, very quickly. Inventory turnover. Okay. So my cost of goods sold right over here. And if we wanted to turn this into days, average days to collect, we can basically take 365 days of the year times the number of days or times it's turning over. That means it's on average about 21 days to collect the AR. Over here, basically for my cost of goods sold for inventory turnover. So AR turnover is credit sales divided by average inventory. Over here, you've got inventory turnover, which is going to be my cost of goods sold divided by my average inventory, right? My average inventory is going to be the value the middle value of my two numbers right over here, are 126, which is the ending, and then 115.5, which is the beginning. I divide this result over here by two, and I get 127.50. One of the things you want to do is whenever you're coming up with the averages, right? So this is the average inventory. Look at this and kind of say, okay, well, 126, 115, what's a number that's kind of in the middle? And as I'm looking at this right now, this is totally wrong because I used AR turnover. So let's go back down here. Oh, I should have been using 120. That number looks better. See, even I make mistakes, which I do all the time. More, most important thing is to admit up to them and you move on. Over here, my average inventory is going to be right between these two values over here. So over here, my inventory turnover ratio is 8.76. It's turning over 8.76 times per year. What does that mean? Well, the days sales and inventory or days and in inventory, this is going to be 365 divided by 8.76. What this means is when I get my inventory, it's taking me 41 days to convert it to cost of goods sold. This is actually a pretty good number, but again, it depends on the industry. Okay. My times interest earned, this is one of the most important ratios. Okay. So this is my earnings before interest and taxes. Okay, my earnings before interest and taxes. Well, what does that mean? I have over here my income from operations, right? So my income from operations 
is going to be over here at 332,000. Come on. Let's see here. Hold on. So this is going to be Okay, so they're saying it's 218 plus 92 is 310. Yeah, okay. So right over here, what this is going to be is my interest, my earnings before interest and taxes. This is going to be over here at another way of saying operating income. So my operating income over here is 332000 which is my earnings before interest and taxes. My interest expense is at 22000 Now, the reason why this ratio is so important is it's telling a lender how much cash or how much free income do they have before they pay off their interest. And this is a pretty high number. Most companies, it's oftentimes significantly lower, especially if it's an emerging company. Asset turnover. Okay, is my net sales right? And we use that over here for my net sales is going to be one million eight ninety divided by my average total assets, which is at nine thirty nine eight fifty. And so my total asset turnover is going to be two. Okay, is that a good or bad number? Depends on the industry. My debt to assets ratio right over here is my total liabilities divided by my total assets. Okay, so this over here is at 41%. Okay, so what does that mean? What well, means that of my total assets, 41% are liabilities? Is that good or bad? It depends on the situation, right? I can show you a company, like if I want to see something kind of fun. So we all know and love the Home Depot, right? So, okay. So if I go to the quarterly re report and I come over here and I look at this, like, okay, total liabilities, 75 billion. Uh, total assets are 76 billion. And so their debt, their debt to equity ratio is like 90 some odd percent. Right. That's incredibly high. It means they're very, very leveraged. Right. And, but when you look at the Home Depot, what's extremely interesting about them is these guys buy back their own shares all the time. They're slowly swallowing themselves. And if I come over here, the reason why, why are their assets so low is they're not taking their cash and giving it back to their shareholders in the form of a dividend. Rather, they're choosing to purchase their own stock. Okay. So as we come back over here, uh, debt to assets ratio. The last one over here is going to be our free cash flow. So, our free cash flow, they're giving this to us over here at 220,000. Capital expenditures were 136, and cash dividends paid were 70,000. Now, note the dividends that are cashed, these are when you look at the earnings per share, these are preferred dividends. That's different than the cash dividends paid, right? Because there's no preferred stock. So, we just just have to kind of go through and assume that there were no preferred dividends. So my cash flows from operations, which is going to be 222,000 minus 136,000 minus 70,000. And this is 220, excuse me. So this is going to be 220,000 minus 136,000 minus 70,000 or six, uh, negative 6,000. Hold on, uh, I screwed that up. Fourteen thousand is my free cash flow. I never would use this ratio. I've never used this one. Um, I've seen debt like the in terms of these ratios, like debt to assets if a company's distressed or they have trouble making pay payments, but then you're almost better off using times interest earned. Uh, inventory turnover, you know, it depends. Like Home Depot, that's an important ratio because they have a lot of inventory. 
So again, all these things are dependent on other things, but this is showing you how to go through and compute the ratios uh, through this Wiley question. And with that all being said, excuse me, I would like to thank Wiley for being with me here today and for you being with me here today. And if you're looking for any other solutions from Wiley or otherwise, please feel free to ask me below in the comments. Have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a good one.